Paper Sun, Lee's Journey to America, written by Virginia Shin Mulo and Helen Foster James. What's this? Lee thumbed through pages of Chinese words, telling another person's story. Your coaching book. You must learn every detail. You'll be questioned in Gumsan. Popo touched Lee's cheek. You leave for America in three weeks. Why can't I stay here with you in Gong Gong? Lee had just celebrated his 12th birthday, but he felt little and lost at the thought of leaving his grandparents. Before your parents were killed by bandits, they bought you a paper son's lot from Uncle Fu. They spent all their money and borrowed the rest. Gong Gong and I have been saving money to pay off their debts. How much did it cost? One hundred dollars for each of your years. That's too much money. Can we get it back? Li knew they needed farm equipment and a new roof. He remembered nights he'd gone hungry dreaming of steamed fish with brown sauce and long noodles with chicken and bok choy. This is better for your future, our future. Look at the chance. Chan Ho was sent to Gumsan. Now he sends money home every month. They never worry about being hungry. I don't want to go. In Gumsan, mountains are topped with gold and streets are paved with silver. Our mountains are topped with wars and our streets are paved with bandits. Gong Gong and I are old and sick. This is no place for you. How will you work our land without me? We'll manage. You must go and make us proud. Li didn't want to travel to the land of the flowery flag, but knew Popo was speaking the truth. I'll go to Gumsan and send the money for food and medicine. I'll make you proud. Popo wiped away a tear. You've made me proud already. My name is Fu Li. My father, Fu Ming, is an American. I was born on... Li studied his coaching book. He was no longer Wang Li. He was Fu Li, his Qi Ming, his paper son name. He would have a new family. He'd have to forget about Popo and Gong Gong. Popo stopped her teaching. In your heart, you always belong to me. Li memorized every detail about his paper family. The village temple faced southeast. Their clock sits to the right of the family portrait on the altar. Every night, Popo quizzed Li. How many windows are there in the few house? Three. No, there are three doors and five windows. Study more. Popo scolded. Gumsan men ask your paper father the same questions. They compare answers. You must convince them you're Fu's real son. Otherwise, we'll lose the money and I'll be deported. Popo continued teaching. No need to think about that. You'll make us proud. Lee traveled to Canton where he boarded a train to Hong Kong. He marked the day in his mind. The year of the tiger, 1926, four days before the Lantern Festival. In Hong Kong, Lee boarded a large ship called the SS President Lincoln. He would rather be on the farm, rubbing Papa's feet and listening to Gong Gong stories. His fingers traced the rim of his cap, feeling Papa's careful teaching. Lee spent his days on deck away from the stale dampness of his quarters. He spent nights dreaming of his true family, but details of Fu's village filled his mind. My name is Fu Li. My father, Fu Ming, is an American. I was born on... On the 21st day, a booming voice shouted, I see land! Gumsan! Lee remembered Papa's words. Don't trust anyone. Don't let anyone see your coaching book. If people saw it, they'd know he was a paper son. Lee dropped his coaching book into the chilly waters. In San Francisco, Lee and other Chinese were taken on a small boat to the Angel Island Immigration Station. 
Lee's sea legs felt like limp bamboo as he walked on the dock. Guards, look ye, barked orders. An interpreter repeated them in Chinese. Men to the right, girls to the left. The men and boys formed a line for medical exams. They took off their shirts. Lee felt ashamed. A man put a cold metal circle on his chest. He poked and prodded. Lee noticed two men and a boy were sent to one side of the room. They were coughing. He heard whispering. They'll be returned to China. Such shame. Lee stood tall and looked strong. The examiner nodded at Lee and pointed to the other side of the room with healthy people. Lee's heartbeat calmed. More orders were barked. Follow me to your dormitory. They were led to the wooden house, Muk Uk. Inside, metal beds were stacked three high. The lowest bunk was Lee's. Everywhere a hand could reach words were carved or written on the walls, telling stories of people who had been there before. Lee ran his hands over the Chinese characters, reading them aloud. Imprisoned in this wooden building, I am always sad and bored. A head poked down from the bunk above and said in a familiar dialect, Read more. Practice your reading. Who are you? Call me Tai. Lee read while Tai listened. It's a pity for hearers to be contained. We can only wait. With a bang, a guard placed a bar across the door. In the morning, the guard removed the bar. Everyone walked in the line to the dining hall. Hungry, Lee ate the tasteless juok rice porridge. In the yard, Lee called each fact in his coaching book. He saw others sitting alone and wondered if they were doing the same. An older boy grabbed Lee's cap. Here, catch this! He yelled to another boy. Lee shouted, Give it back! Give it back now! The boys laughed while Lee shuttled between them, begging for his cap, his only reminder of Popo and his real life. Lee fought back tears trying to grab his cap. Tai stepped between the boys, intercepting Lee's cap. Take better care of your belongings. Before Lee could thank him, Tai was gone. Lee joined Tai on the bench and pointed to a newspaper. Are you going to read that? Practice, read it to me. Lee read to Tai. Tai asked, Can I trust you? Lee remembered Papa's words, don't trust anyone. But Tai had helped him with those two mean boys. Lee nodded. Tai handed Lee an orange. Inside the orange peel was a note. Where did you get this? Tai said. My father paid kitchen help to pass this to me. Can you read it? Lee nodded and read the tiny Chinese characters. Baby niece born two months ago. Name is Mui. Tai bowed his head, repeating the words. Lee whispered, You're a paper son. Tai's face changed. Don't say that. It's okay, Lee whispered. So am I. Be careful who you talk to. Don't trust anyone. Weeks later, Lee was called in the interrogation room. His stomach churned. One small mistake and he would be sent back to China. The interrogator asked questions. An interpreter repeated each question in Chinese. What's your name? Fu Ling. What's your father's name? Fu Ming. Where he was born? San Francisco in Chinatown. How many windows are in your house? Three. No, five. The men looked at each other. Lee took a deep breath. Three, five? What's your answer? I'm sorry, I'm nervous. There are three doors, five windows. Where is the rice bin? On the right side of the kitchen door. Where do you sleep? In the bedroom I share with my cousin. They asked questions for hours. Lee grew tired and confused. 
His cap slipped from his nervous fingers. The interpreter picked it up. He whispered, Hide this. Don't bring it into this room again. Trust me. Lee took his cap and nodded, confused as he remembered Popo and Tai's words to not trust anyone. The interrogators talked in hushed voices. Lee couldn't understand. He studied their faces. Finally, the interpreter spoke. You may return to your dormitory. Questions consumed Lee's thoughts and tied up his stomach. Did I answer the questions right? Did I say anything wrong? A week later, a guard led Lee to the interrogation room again. The interrogator stared at Lee. Your father said the rice bean was to the left of the door, not the right. We moved it since he left China. Rain damaged the left side of the door. My father wouldn't have known that, Lee answered confidently, even though he wasn't. The interrogator asked one last question. Why do you want to leave here? Lee was nervous. This wasn't one of the answers he studied. He decided to tell the truth. I want to make my family proud. There are more opportunities in America. Three days later, the guard opened the dormitory's door and called fully. The interpreter was waiting for him. The interrogators liked your last answer. Good fortune to you in Gumsan. Then he whispered, you remind me of my own little boy. Lee bowed to him and returned to the dormitory. Are you going to be landed? Tai asked. Yes, tomorrow. Why are you sad? People have been waiting months to leave this place. Lee wanted to tell Tai how a part of him wished he'd failed questions so he could return to China, to Popo and Gongo. I'm scared. I've never met my father. Trust me, you'll be fine. Tai smiled. I didn't want to come either, but now I need to stay. That night, Lee added their story to the wall. I didn't want to come, but now I need to stay. In the morning, Lee gathered his belongings. He felt his cups ream and read Papa's tiny secrets teaching. Trust your heart. Lee put on his cap and walked out of the wood house. He was landed. In San Francisco, his new future greeted him. Lee welcomed his paper father like Popo had taught him. Hello, my name is Fuli. My father, Fuming, is an American and so am I.